Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, church family. Good evening, Facebook family. So glad to see you all. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, hump day. I'm so excited to be on this live tonight. And I just welcome you all. Please share the video with your followers. Thank you all for jumping on. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for coming back. This is a week three with Minister Tamika, and we are learning about prayer and intercession. Quickly, um, let us pray. Let us pray before we go into the lesson. So if you have your hand in language, I encourage you to use it. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise tonight. Lord, we give you honor tonight. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor your name. We honor you, oh God. We honor your presence. For your word has declared where two or more are gathered. In your name, there you are in the midst. And so, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in the midst of this platform. We welcome you, Lord God, on this live stream. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our lives. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our individual homes, wherever we are, if we're in our vehicles, at work, wherever we are. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We give you permission, Lord God, to have your way and to move in the way that you so choose. Lord, we say thank you for being so good, so kind, and so merciful. Thank you, Father God, for being with us. Thank you, Father, for keeping us all week long and bringing us home safely. Lord, we just say thank you. We are appreciate you, God. We love you. We bless you. We decrease, God, that you may increase in our lives. Now, Lord, I submit my mind, my spirit, my mouth mm, to you, Lord, to have your way. Lord, I ask that you would use me like never before as a yielded vessel, Lord God, to release what you have given unto me. I pray that it does not fall on deaf ears, Lord, that it will penetrate the hearts of the people that are listening, that they were taken and applied to their lives, that their lives will be transformed, God, but more so, God, that they would uh, run to the secret place, that they would learn of you and spend that intimate time with you, Father, that they would know you as our Father. Lord, I thank you. Satan, I bind you on every side. This is not your time. This is not your season. I come against any hindrance and anything that will stop the flow, any disruption. Hmm. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise tonight, God. We say, have your way. And we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you all again for tuning in. Like I said, this is week three. It has been good. I hope you all have enjoyed the teachings thus far. Um, 
I'm going to go over just a few, just a little review of what we went over in the previous weeks. I'll make it kind of um, quick, not too long. We're not going to stay there long. But um, so we covered prayer and intercession. Hopefully we have a clear understanding what is prayer and what's the difference in prayer and what is intercession. We also covered uh what do we cover? What does the Bible say about prayer? What does the Bible say about intercession? We also covered that as well. And then that was the first week. And then the second week, we gave you tips on how to get your prayers answered. And some of them was praying the scriptures. Also speaking things, because we know that there's power in our words. And what we speak, we can manifest. As the scripture has said, if we call those things to be not as though they were and whatsoever we speak, well, actually we can speak to the mountain and ask, say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, we shall have so if we say. So that is another um, something that we learned. And we also how to partner, to get a prayer partner. I, I pray that you have um, gotten you a prayer partner by now. Um, someone's a partner. I've invited you guys to inbox to church to get a prayer partner or to have the ministers in the church to partner with you if you're um, believing God or if you just want to grow in the area of prayer and intercession. We talked about fasting, we talked about sowing seeds. And so with that, let's get into this week's lesson. So we talked about um, tips to get prayers through. Now we're going to talk about some of the things that can hinder prayers. Some of the things that can hinder prayers. And so one of the things that um, the Lord gave me, which is so common, is doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief. Matthew 21 and 22 says, whenever, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive it, said so you have faith. James 1, 6 through 7 said, let, but let him ask in faith, no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. We don't want to be tossed to and fro, to and forth. We want to be grounded. For the person must not suppose that he will receive anything from God. So that's, and even the scripture even says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those that come to him must first believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So doubt and unbelief will hinder your prayers. So you want to have faith. Study the scriptures. Sit in his presence. Learn who he is. Do what you need to do. The, word, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get in the word of God. They have um, YouTube. I use YouTube a lot. And they have the scriptures on YouTube. You Sometimes I'll play them at... And let us just try to pick up where we left off. Lion devil, this word is going to come forth and we are going to learn to pray in faith in the name of Jesus. And so where I left off at was um, doubt and unbelief can hinder our prayers. And um, the last scripture that I was reading was Hebrew 4 and 16. Let us then... Um, let us come with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. So faith is necessary because without it, it is impossible to please God. So doubt and unbelief will definitely hinder our prayers. The next one we have is... Um, the next one that I have is we don't abide. And these are not necessarily in order of importance. These are just, this is just the way I'm presenting it today. So um, we don't abide in prayer. 
And what does abide means? Abide means to remain stable in a fixed state, meaning you're, you're fixed, your mind is, is stayed on it almost even like uh, the scripture says, pray without ceasing. We are not abiding in prayer. That is one another thing that can hinder your prayers from being answered. John 15 and 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So we want to be abiding. We want to be stable. We want to um, live prayer as a lifestyle. We want to constantly be in communion with the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't always have to be talking in prayer. It can be sitting and listening. It can just be sitting in the presence of the Lord. But we, we need to abide. We need to be in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So the next one we have. I have is unforgiveness. Oh my God. Unforgiveness, grudges. Uh, what, are, what are the people saying nowadays? Uh, I can't even think of what the young people say. I'm always talking to the young people. I can't even think of the term that they use. I, when I'm ministering to them, I try to use the terminology that they use so they can relate to what I'm saying or I can relate to what they're saying. So, But unforgiveness is another hindrance of prayer. Mark 11 and 25, it says that in whom, when, no, and when you stand in prayer, forgive if you have anything against anyone, you want to forgive so that your father in heaven will also forgive you of your trespasses. So we don't want to have unforgiveness when we go to the father, even, um, when we're praying, we should even ask the Father to forgive us. Lord, forgive us um, for things that we may have done, uh, whether it been by knowingly or unknowingly, um, things that we may have done that we may not know. You know, when, when we approach God in prayer, we should ask the Lord for forgiveness. And absolutely, if we offend someone or if we have odd against someone, we should go and um, ask for forgiveness and we should forgive them as well. I learned uh, recently about um, another thing about uh, forgiveness. Sometimes we ask people to forgive us even when we have not done wrong. Like if you have been in conflict with a loved one on and off and you know, you're know you holding a grudge and they're holding a grudge. Sometimes the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. So sometimes if we want peace, we could just could be the one to say, you know what? It wasn't that big. Please forgive me. You know what I'm saying? And so we can, so that you can move on. You don't want anything that that's minute, that small to hinder your prayers from being answered. So you want to um, always search your heart. Lord, search my heart. Lord, if you find anything not like you, these are some of the prayers that I pray. Lord, remove it. Lord, purify my heart. Lord, cleanse me. And and not only that, if you're not even asking, is when you're in his presence, the more you're in his presence, you're in worship, you're, you're sitting in his presence, some of those things just going to fall off automatically because they don't go hand in hand with the father. That is not his nature. So the more you're in his presence, the more you read in the word, the more you're fasting, the more you're uh, studying who he is, the more you seek in his faith, those things will begin to fall off. The more you will be changed into his image. And so you want to make sure that you're living a lifestyle of prayer. You're constantly praying and just stand in the presence of the Lord and searching our hearts. We want our hearts to be purified. We want to have the heart of the Father. So we don't want unforgiveness or doubt or unbelief hindering our prayers. When we go before the Lord, we're going because we, we when we're praying, either we're, we're petitioning God, we're praying for something, or we're praying on behalf of someone else. And we don't want those um, things to hinder. So we want to make sure that we, we're not harboring unforgiveness and grudges and things like that in our heart. Another thing that I have is selfish motives, or we're praying from our flesh. 
some of the things we're praying, a lot of times we go, we're praying for material things. And again, I'm not saying that we don't need to pray for material things. Sometimes we do need vehicles. We need homes. We need uh, um, favor for God to move in, in, in areas in our life. And I'm not saying that, but sometimes our motives, we may want to, we don't need a new car, but we want one because Susie got one. Or we want to pray because we want to be seen. As Jesus said, when we pray, go in secret. Like um, when he was uh, teaching the Sadducees or the Pharisees, they were praying out on the street to be seen. And so we don't want our motives to be wrong. And we don't want to pray for selfish reasons. And so um, the scripture that I have for that is James 4 and 3. It says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend in your in on to spend in on your passions. So we want our motives and our hearts to be right when we go before the Father. It's good to um, check our hearts um, periodically. Um, asking God to just purify us because we don't want to have all of that junk in our heart. That's where um, being in the presence of the Lord comes and um, constantly communicating with the Father and asking the Lord to purify us and cleanse us. So we, when we approach his throne, we, we don't have all of these things. We're not selfish. We're not praying for selfish motives. We're not praying to be seen. We're not praying out of our flesh. We're praying from a heavenly place and it's also important for your heart posture to be right we're not praying as orphans we're praying as children of the most high god we're seated in heavenly places and when we're in that place we want to be praying from that place we want to be praying as sons and daughters hallelujah 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 we want to be praying as sons sons to Abba, our father. We want to be praying as sons. We don't want to pray because we don't know him. And you may start out that way, but the more you, the more you're in his presence, the more you sit at his feet, the more you be, you seek his face and not his hand. And what I mean by that, Lord, I'm just coming to seek you. Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I just want to be in your presence. Lord, saturate me with your presence. Lord, here I am. I just want to sit. Some days I come home and it's like, I can just see the Lord just holding me in his arms. Lord, I just want to be with you. I'm not asking for anything. And when I say seek his face and not his hand, I'm not saying, Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. You know, um, when we're in love or with our kids, you know, sometimes they come to us, yeah, mom, I need this, mom, I need that. But then sometimes we got teenage kids, they'll just come in our room and just lay and just talk. Or and if you're in a relationship, you're not always coming asking for something. Sometimes you just want to be in, a, in their presence, them just being in the home or being in the room. That's how it is with the father. We shouldn't always just come come like lord i need this lord i need lord i want this because sometimes we're asking for things that we don't even need it's just stuff that we want so we want to make sure when we're praying that we're not praying um with selfish motives and that we're not praying from our heart another thing we are not praying according to the will of the father we're not praying his will. We're praying for things that is outside of the will of God. And God doesn't honor that. First John 5 and 14. It says this is the confidence that we have towards him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, if you don't know his will. Get in the word, get in his presence, because that's where you're going to know. We, we know what's right from wrong, but it could be some of the, the little things that we might not understand. Get in the word of God. That's where you're going to learn his will. That's where you're going to increase your faith. That's where you're going to become more like him in his presence, in his word, in worship, sitting at his feet, 
coming to hear him, not always coming to talk. I, I, I spoke um, in uh, previous weeks about um, prayer is also listening to what the father has to say. I don't know if I spoke about it, but getting a journal and just writing those things, but down of what the Lord has said to us and then praying it back to him. So we talked about selfish motives. We talked about praying according to his will. Doubt and unbelief. What else do we have? We talked about abiding in him. And these are a few other things that I want to talk about briefly. And then I'll just give you the scriptures. It would be best if you study afterwards, um, after each lesson, go back and look at the other recordings so that you can try to get it all. Again, tag friends, family who may need this teaching. It's so much going on in the world and we need more intercessors. And even in our family, we need more intercessors and intercessors interceding for our country for our kids, in our schools, in our homes. We need more prayer. And so I'm asking that you would share, inbox this message, tag someone, and go back and reread it that we, so that we can grow in prayer and get in a community. I met someone today just briefly talking and I know it was God because she says she, she doesn't work the night shift. No, she does work the night shift, but she was in there on the day, on the day shift. And she, she, she started to talk about my hair, but then we began to talk about other things. And then we began to connect. She began to tell me what she was doing and, you know, in the, uh, for the Lord. And I began to talk and we just connected. And then um, she texted me afterwards. So community is very important. I know the world says the word, bird, was it birds of a flat feather flock together, but what if we flock with all intercessors? What would it be like? What would it be like if we, when we hang out with our friends and our family and we're praying? Do we have to pray all the time? No, sometimes we can be worship and just be, um, just be in conscience of the Holy Spirit. I could be mid, in mid-conversation or midway driving on the phone talking to a friend and then I'll see um, a homeless person in my mind, I'm praying like, Lord, bless her. You know, I could see a funeral procession going down and I, and I, and I, I may say, hold on a second, let me pray. And then I'll pray. But I'm just, and I'm not saying I, I had to get to this point, but it came from me being in the presence of the Lord. And so with that, I want Another thing, just to pray with authority. Jesus has given us authority. So we're not, we don't have to pray as orphans. The Bible says we have authority over the enemy. The enemy is already defeated. Jesus has already done that. Romans, John, I'm sorry, John 16 and 23. Study that. Know the authority that we have. We have authority and we don't, we're not even exercising it. God has given it to us. We, we're not defeated. We don't have to live defeated lives. We're living it because we don't know. The Bible says people perish for a lack of knowledge. It's almost like being a, being a, a CEO of a top company and you just wandering around and you don't know the power that you have to get these workers. Hey, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to do that. Devil, I need you under my feet. And we, we don't know that we can speak to these things. But a lot of times we so much focus on a problem, but not the solution. Jesus is the solution. So I want us to understand our authority. Study authority. I should, should have had more scriptures. Maybe next week I'll add more scriptures. But you can um, just, if you got the Bible app, you can look that up. You can Google scriptures on authority. But understand who you are in Christ and pray from that position. Not from where we was last week. Because each day we're growing and growing. Every time I go before the Father, I'm growing. I'm growing in my identity. I'm growing in who I am. And I have that confidence. The scripture said, let us have confidence. We don't want to go all down like, like a beggar. And we don't know, you know, should I ask or should I? No, no. 
It's God's pleasure to give it to us. He's our father. And another thing that I want to add, and this is what I'm going, this is what I'm going to end with. Some of us just don't pray. We'll get on the phone and text and ask somebody or get on Facebook and pray. How do you know that your prayers won't get answered if you don't even try? How don't how do you know that your prayers won't get answered if you don't try? James 4 and 2 says, you, you, you have not because you don't ask. Also, Proverbs 28 and 9 says, if one turns away his ear from the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So a lot of times we're not even praying. Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I need, oh, we'd we be so quick to text the pastor or text a friend and you haven't even prayed for yourself yet. And I'm not saying not ask people to pray. Sometimes I'll say, this is what I'm believing God for. And I want you to touch and agree because the prayer of agreement is powerful. And so with that, I just pray that we will grow in the area of prayer. If you haven't been praying, start today. If you need a prayer partner, inbox the church. If you need someone partnering, I got this thing coming up, or I need this, I, I, I'm, I'm dealing with this, and you want someone to partner with you in prayer, inbox the church and one of the ministers will get back with you. As always, we're always praying. We're praying for the followers. Even once we get off this live, I'll still continue to pray for everyone that are listening, even those that are listening to the replay. To the replay. And so as I said, as I was talking about um, sitting in the presence of the Lord and growing in the area of intimacy and praying from um, a son, and understand our and our authority. Maybe you have been in a backslidden state. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you want to know Jesus. Let us pray the prayer that will get us back in good fellowship or even introduce us to Jesus. Put your hands on your heart. I'm asking you. So put your hands on your heart because this is a matter of the heart. Heavenly Father, and you can repeat after me, I come to you asking for forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son and he died on the cross that I may be forgiven and have eternal life. Come into my life and have complete control and help me to walk in your footsteps daily. Amen. Amen. Now I want to pray for those that want to know, want to grow in prayer, and they may not know where to start. Heavenly Father, we come before you. I lift up every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, you know what they're going through. You know their hearts. You know their desires. I pray, Father God, for visitation, that you will reveal yourself to them as they step out in faith and pray. If they have never prayed, I pray that they'll begin. If they are beginning prayer, beginning, a beginner in prayer, I pray, Lord God, that you would increase them in that area. And if they're intercessors, as intercessors, I pray, Lord God, they, that they would even grow in that area. I thank you, Father God, for this word. I pray that it penetrated their hearts. Lord God, that their lives will be changed and that they will be empowered to pray. Lord God, I pray 
that they will want to seek you, seek you all the more that they will want to be in your presence, that they will want to sit at your feet, that they will want to be like more, more like you, that they will want to walk in unforgiveness. I cancel every assignment of doubt, every assignment of unbelief. I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for angelic visitations, Lord, that you will visit them in the night season. I pray that you would encourage their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise, God, tonight. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor and we thank you for being in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord God, even though there was the disruption, Lord God, in the airways, that this word went forth and it would accomplish Everything that you have sent it out to do, to change us, to make us better in the area of prayer. We cover our schools. We cover our children. We cover our loved ones. We cover our unsaved loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the increase in the area of prayer. In the name of Jesus, increase us. Lord God, I even pray for more prayer assignments. Some of us has, have been um, praying, but we've just been praying for our immediate family. I hear the Lord is saying he wants you to pray for your community. He wants us to pray for our cities. He wants us to pray for friends. He wants us to pray in the workplace. We don't have to be all loud. We can do it inside prayer, you know, um, or, you know, on our break or whatever. A lot of times I may hold my head down and just pray, Holy Spirit be with me. He's with us anyway. Let us just be conscious of his presence daily. Lord, we give you praise tonight. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we just submit ourselves to you. Have your way this night. Bless these your people, God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, I thank you all for joining. I pray that you all were, was blessed. I encourage you to go back and watch the replays and study the scriptures. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit emotional. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. Lord, manifest your presence in their home. Manifest, manifest yourself. Make yourself known to them. I encourage you this week to be conscious of the Holy Spirit. I pray for encounters with the Holy Spirit, even in the midnight hour. As you get up, just be conscious. He is with you wherever we go. Scripture even said, if we make our bed in hell, he is there. Let us be conscious of the Holy Spirit and the Lord and the angels that is with us daily. Thank you all for joining in. I would love to see you all next week. I'm so excited for what God has given me to share with you all. And I pray that you all take this and add it to your life. You cannot go wrong with knowing Jesus. You cannot go wrong with partnering with him. It's almost like when you're walking and the wind is blowing. Those of us that are here from Chicago, we know how the wind can be. And you ever walk to school or walking down the street and the wind is just blowing you, propelling you forward? That's what it feels like when we're partnering with the Lord. We're moving. We're excelling. We're moving forward. And so I just pray that over you tonight. Acceleration in the realm of prayer. In the name of Jesus. Well, Manifest the Glory International Ministries and our visitors 
and our viewers, it is time to give. If you want to partner with this word and sow a seed into this ministry, I believe the information is in the comments. Please comment. Please share. And so giving is another way of honoring God. Sow a seed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for these, your people who are sowing, who are giving, who is partnering with this word. Lord, your word says that you give seed to the sower. And I thank you for those that are giving and for those that who desire to give, but don't have it. We pray, Father, for a supernatural blessing this week in the name of Jesus. If you don't have PayPal and you want to give another way, inbox the church. If you have a prayer request, inbox the church. Any questions, if you want to join and be a member, we are virtual now. Inbox the church and one of the ministers, the elders, even our pastor will get back with you. Again, I thank you for joining tonight. I pray that you all will bless. I pray that you will have sweet sleep. Inbox your testimonies because I believe the Lord is going to encounter you. I believe you're going to have um, encounters from the Lord. You can, if you feel comfortable, put your testimonies in the comment section or inbox the church. This is just not, this is just not a teaching. It's just not a regular message. God is looking for partners to partner. And we see the news. I haven't seen it in a while, but I've heard what's been going on in the news. We know that it's needed. Why not it be us to stand up and pray and make a difference? We, there's enough followers. We need more leaders that will stand up and be bold. I encourage you again to um, study authority and understand the authority that you have and being a believer. Thank you all for joining. And I look forward to you all returning on next week. I am so excited about this series. I pray that it has been a blessing to you. And I encourage you to look for the Holy Spirit and be, just be conscious of his presence with you this week. God bless you all. Good night. Good night. Good night.